Howdy guys, IndiePixel here. In this video, I'm going to walk through the creation of this mailbox prop, uh, completely made procedurally inside of Houdini, and then textured here inside of Quixel Mixer. And so I'm going to walk through how to build up all the shapes completely procedurally, and how to uh, procedurally generate all the UVs, and then finally how to bake out all the necessary texture maps uh, for Quixel Mixer, and then I'm going to walk through all the layers for this particular uh, texture here. All right, so lots of stuff to cover. Let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna get the mailbox started here by dropping down a geometry node, and I'm gonna type in mailbox. I'm gonna hit enter on the keyboard and then drop down a grid. And uh, this is gonna serve as the side profile for my mailbox. I'm gonna put in one and one for the size and two and two for the rows and columns, and then set its orientation to YZ. Then I'm going to drop down a uh, group expression node uh, because I want to group just the top points of this grid here because I want to bevel them and create a nice rounded top for this type of mailbox. And so I'm going to call the group name uh, top. We're going to set the group type to points. And for the vex expression, I'm going to type out at p.y is greater than zero. And that will group just those top points because they are above the grid here. And then we can poly bevel those guys. So let's drop down a poly bevel. And we're going to work just on the top point. So let's select it from the drop down there. And then I'm going to set the distance to 0.5. And that will be um, equidistant on both sides there. And so let's add a bunch of divisions. There we go. It looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks fine. You can add as many as you want. And then I'm going to fuse them because the poly bevel will leave a couple of points up here um, right on top of each other. So let's just fuse it to clean that up. All right, and then I'm going to drop down another group expression node, and this time we're going to group the bottom points here because I need to create the overall height for our mailbox. So I'm going to call this the bottom, and we're going to type out at p.y is less than zero this time, and set the group type to points, and that will select just those bottom points there. And then I'm going to drop down a transform node, and we'll just move the bottom points uh, down however much we want. I'm going to do 0.5, just kind of keep all this, all the uh, values here nice and even and consistent. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to drop down a null node. We'll call this outside profile. And now I want to go and cut out the little section of the top of the mailbox here that has the door where you drop the mail in. And so to do that, I'm going to drop down a box. I'm going to Boolean out uh, the shape of a box on the side here from this particular shape. Uh, and so let's go and do that. So let's drop down a Boolean node. I'm going to wire in the profile into the first input, and then we're going to take this box and put it into the second input there. And then we just need to orient this appropriately. So let's take a look and see where the profile is. And then let's take a look at our box. And if we were to go into our side view by hitting uh, spacebar four, uh, we can move this guy up. And uh, I do want this all to be procedural. So I'm just getting a place. So it's just 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Done that on my own. <laughs> that was easier and faster though. All right, so now when we boolean this out, we get you know a nice profile. I mean, it'd be kind of nice if uh, we did a linear taper as well, just a little bit of a taper to give it a little bit more interest. So if I drop down a linear taper and I set the uh, capture origin in Y to 0.5, then add a little bit of taper. Yeah, you can see on the profile here, it's giving it a nice little slant, which is kind of cool. Yeah. All right, cool. So then. We want to go and match size here. So let's drop down a match size node. And I want to set this to min, like so. Very cool. So this is going to serve as the side profile. So let's move this guy over to the side. So I'm going to drop down a transform node. And we're going to set the translate in x to 0 0.5. And then I'm going to name this node width, as this is going to control the width of the mailbox. And then I want to drop down a mirror node. And this mirror node is going to flip this over in the x direction by default for me. And that's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And then I'm going to drop down a skin node. And by default, it's going to get flipped as it skins the geometry. So we need to select the mirror node and turn off the reverse normals. And that adjusts that. But then we still have inverse uh, geometry. And so to fix that, we're going to drop down a reverse node like so. And that will take care of that. Very cool. All right, so the next uh, thing we need to do is produce some UVs for this. 
and uh, if we take a look at our UV editor we don't have anything just yet uh, in order to do this we need to produce some seams so how are we gonna do that well um, I want to select this edge and the topmost edge of this geometry so how do we do that procedurally um, well one way you could do it is uh, drop down a group by range node here so we take a look at the group by range set it to points I'm gonna call this seam I think that'll be fine for now and if I set this to the end of two, I want to select the last two points in the geometry. But currently, after all the mirror and skinning operations, our point indices are all out of whack. So let's drop down a sort node to get that reordered. And we're going to set the point sort to by vertex order, like so. And now if I were to go to my group by range node, you can see the last two points are right here. All right, so I'm going to uh, keep that I'm going to invert the range and then I need that to be an actual edge uh, but let's go and select the top two points as well so I'm going to drop down a group by expression node and like we've seen before we can actually get those top points there but we, we need to type in a little bit different of an expression for this so uh, I'm going to call this uh, points and this one is going to be called a uh, seam just like this guy and for the merge operation we're going to say union with existing so that way they add to each other so I'm going to say at p dot y is equal to the get bb box size and the incoming geometry is zero and we want to look specifically at the y component and you can see it added the top two points here so now with those points selected we can drop down a group promote node and convert that to edges so let's convert the seam to edges in order for this to work we need to say that we include only the elements on the boundary and so we end up with these two seams right here so the new name let's just type in seam and then let's drop down a UV flatten node and for the seams and the flattening constraints let's set that to seam and then hit 5 on the keyboard to take a look at our UVs and that looks pretty good one thing we can do is uh, put an asterisk into the rectify group and that will just even it up so it just straightens everything out into a perfect rectangle which is perfect for this type of prop. Uh, and the last thing that I need to do is uh, drop down a UV layout node. I'm going to go to 5 for my UV layout view. And I'm going to hit enter so I can see the gizmo for the transform. And I want to just put this into a region here because I'm going to save some space for the other parts and pieces of this mailbox. And then I want to set a few of these parameters on the UV layout node. I'm going to set the scale islands to match their surface area. So we get a nice even texel density around all of our UVs. I want to then apply the padding just so we can space it out so we don't get any mip map bleeding or anything like that. I'm going to add some padding of two I think for now and yeah that is everything. So now if we hit one on the keyboard to go back to our scene view and put in a UV visualize node from the labs toolkit which is very handy and then set the texture tiling to one and one you can see we have perfect UVs and if I go and change the width now to anything else it's just constantly going to be updating awesome so I just leave that at 0.5 for now and uh, now I want to go and focus on the uh, side pieces but for that we're gonna need to go and grab the profile before uh, we boolean it out right uh, the side pieces uh, are not cut out on the sides here so we want to sample it from up here and then uh, I'm gonna go and create a reference copy for my width node so I'm just gonna say create a copy that way it just copies over all the settings um, so we just have one place where we change the width value all right so then I want to create some UVs for this guy right off the bat and this basically is the geometry we want to use so to do that I'm just going to drop down a UV texture node and we will select the face option for the texture type and if we switch over to our UV view by hitting 5 on the keyboard you can see it just maps the entire face uh, perfectly to world space so a really quick and easy way to do that uh, then I want to go and poly extrude this guy out just to give it a little bit of thickness on the sides. All right, so let's just go up here and just pop this out a little bit. Uh, let me turn off all my component displays so I can see a little bit better. Uh, let's go and also output the back when we put this on the sides. We have to make sure that we see something in the little cutout over here. All right, cool. So I'm going to go and expose my extrude front group and then the extrude side group. Let's just expose them all for now because... Um, I'm going to get rid of all this geometry on the side here. We're going to put more of a kind of a decorative element on the side here, uh, just like you see on the real mailboxes. 
And so I'm going to do a uh, blast here. So how do we get rid of the side? Well, if we drop down a blast node and it blasts away our side group, we're left with the two pieces. But I need to keep the geometry at the bottom here. And so um, I'm going to drop down a group node here first above the blast node. And I'm going to say keep by normal. So I'm going to turn off the base group. We'll call this bottom. And I'm going to set the direction for the normal to check is the negative one direction, the Y. And then we'll set the spread angle to zero. And that selects just that bottom piece, like so. And then inside of our blast node, now we can say that we want to blast away our extrude back, our front, and our bottom, and then just reverse that. And that gets rid of all those guys. Cool. So looking at our UVs again, you can see that the poly extrude node added some UVs for us for that side group, but we need to put this back into something a little more reasonable. So I'm going to hit one on the keyboard and then drop down a UV flatten node again and take a look. So let's go back and that is exactly what I need. So in this case, the UV flatten node by default, if you don't put any seams in there, we'll just take the border edges of your geometry and use that as a seam. I'm going to put an asterisk in for the rectify just to make sure that it's nice and rectangular. Cool, so all we really need to do now, we've got our UVs, let's just drop down a mirror node and we'll flip it in the uh, X direction. And then we need to lay out our UVs for that specific shell. So let's drop down a UV layout node. And then let's merge these two guys together here at the bottom. So I'm going to select this, merge it. Oh, and we also need a match size as well. So let's just uh, alt left click and drag to make a copy of the previous one we had. Yeah, and there we go. So now we're starting to get the uh, the main shape here. Again, like I said, we're going to put a different element over the sides here. So I'm not worried about that right now. All right. So with this merge node turned on, let's select our UV layout two there and go to our UV view. I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard and I'm going to move these guys up to somewhere around here. I think that'll work. Let's actually just do that. And then let's make sure that we could make a little bit more space actually. But first let's go to our UV layout node. We'll scale the islands to match their surface area. And then we'll add some padding in there. Uh, and then let's uh, hit escape over here in the UV view. Then select our other UV layout node that's controlling the main area here. Let's scooch this down a little bit. And then maybe make um, these guys a little bit bigger. So the side pieces can be a little bit bigger. Have a little more space. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. So let's check out our uh, UVs now with the visualize node. That looks uh, pretty good. So let's go and change our width just to make sure. It's always a good idea to check as you're modeling your procedural models. And that is working beautifully. So if I make it really wide, let's take a look at our UVs. So you can see what's happening. It's just constantly updating to fit within that area as best it can. So let's put this back to 0.5. There you go. So now I want to focus on the trim piece, uh, this decorative piece that goes around the side. It's not really decorative, it's more of a structural piece, a trim piece that goes around the side here and the little legs on the bottom. So I'm going to go and drop down a uh, convert line node and I want to go and grab our side profile and let's uh, actually grab it from our match size over here. So that way it's already sitting on the, the grid. Perfect. So for this to work, I don't need the bottom piece here. And so the convert line um, split all this up into separate primitives there. So in order to get that bottom line procedurally, I'm going to drop down a sort node and say sort by Y in the primitive sort. And you'll notice that this gives us the primitive of zero at the bottom always because it is the lowest. So I'm going to go and get a blast node now and uh, we can just blast away primitive zero because we know that that is always at the bottom. So then let's drop down a polypath node and select connect endpoints. And that will leave us with a single primitive. So we just have a single curve and we should drop down a sort node as well, just so we can uh, redo our point order. You can see we're getting zero, one, two, somewhere around there. So let's do um, by vertex order and that just cleans that up. So it's zero to one. And with that, now I need to go and add the little leg. So this currently, if we were to template our main area for a mailbox, this currently only goes down to the bottom of the main box area, but the legs actually stick out a little bit farther. So I need to add on a little bit more to this curve that we just generated. So to do that, I am going to drop down a line over here. So let's drop down a line. And this line is going to point in the negative one direction in the y direction there. 
And uh, let's make it a little bit smaller. This will control the, the leg height. So let's actually name this appropriately then. Cool. And then let's copy it to a point. So let's drop down a copy to points node and let's wire in both these guys. So the line goes into the first input, the profile goes into the second input. And now currently you'll notice that we're getting a line copy to every point and that's not what we want. What I want to do is drop down a group by range node and just get the two endpoints. So the first and last point in our curve. So I'm going to set the group type to points. I'm going to call the group ends and we are going to go down to the sliders here for start and end and just increase them to one and then invert the range and that gives us just those two endpoints there. And then in our copy to points node, let's say the target points now equals those that ends. I totally misnamed it. There we go. We'll call it ends appropriately. Awesome. All right, cool. So now we have our little legs that we can attach onto the end of our main profile here. So let's do a merge node now. And with that, we can then drop down a polypath node and say connect endpoints. And we now have just a single primitive again. So if we turn off our point numbers, you can see we just have a single primitive. And we should always go and clean up our vertex order. So let's drop down a sort node and we would say point sort by vertex order. So now we have zero, one, two, three, all the way around to the end. Perfect. So with that done, we need to create the actual profile that we're going to sweep along this curve here. So for that, um, I chose to do a grid. So my previous test here, I chose to, to use a grid and I'm going to set this guy to one and one. In fact, I'm going to use my preset just so you guys can see me use that. So I just created a preset called unit grid and it sets it to one and one and two and two for rows and columns. Now for this guy, I really only need the X, Y plane for this one. And then I'm going to go and drop down a match size node. And this guy is going to be uh, set to the max of justify X. So we we'll say max and then min for justify Y. And the reason why I want to do this, you'll see once we copy it or we sweep it onto the, the curve is I just try to find the position. You can always do this after the fact as well. Let me then convert the line here. So we get a primitive per segment in our geometry. So we have a segment per piece there. And then let's blast away the parts that we don't want. So in this case, I don't want primitive two or one. So I'm going to say two space one and then flip it. That way we are left with just that. Cool. So that's basically the trim profile, but I need to give it a little bit of thickness. So let's uh, polypath this. So it's back into a single curve. So connect ends and then let's do a poly expand. This will add our thickness to it. So poly expand 2D is really useful node for stuff like this. So that just gives a little bit of thickness so we can control it as well. Uh, let's um, add a little bit of a bevel to it. So I'm going to drop down a poly bevel node. And let's just bevel the points. Let's just do a little bit, just so it catches some light. Doesn't look so harsh. All right, so let's then drop down a sweep node. So I'm going to feed this in for my uh, backbone, and then the second input is going to be my cross section of this profile. And there we go. So we need to make this uh, obviously a lot smaller. Uh, let's drop down a transform node and get this into an appropriate position. So I'm just going to use the uniform scale for this. And let's actually template on our main mailbox just so we can see what's going on. And let's turn off all of our component displays. And it looks like uh, we need to reverse it also. So let's reverse it. All right. And then I also need to, well, we could either flip it or we can um, just put it on the negative side and then mirror it to the positive side. Let's scale this down just a little bit more. It's still way too big for my taste. Yeah, something like that. All right, then let's uh, move it over. So I'm going to do a transform. And we're going to move it negative 0.5 for this one. And uh, I think I want just a little bit more. Yeah, because we need to account for the the size of the poly bevel on our sides. But that hides it quite nicely. Yeah, that's perfect. Then let's uh, mirror that. There we go. So now we have the two. So the other thing we need to take into account is the UVs uh, for this. So for this uh, sweep node, we can do this quite easily. We can go to the compute UVs and uh, I don't want to normalize it, but I do want to keep the length weighted. That'll actually keep the full length of that UV shell there. Um, and then I don't want to snap. I want the actual uh, width and, and length of that whole entire piece. And then we can go and uh, put this into the side over here for 
our UV layout. So let me go and um, do a UV layout node and turn this guy on. And then I'm just going to move this and put this guy over here. So I'm going to say these guys can go over here. I'm going to say for rotations, we can do 90 degree rotations. And we'll just keep this guy in that area. Looks good. Let's also scale to match. Doesn't really matter for this one. Let's apply a padding and all that good stuff just so we don't get any map bleeding. Yeah, and there we go. So let's merge it into our final merge node over here. Turn on our UV visualize and let's turn off the template over here. Look at that. We have something that looks kind of like a mailbox now. Um, we can throw down a match size here as well just to get it to sit on the ground. Voila, mailbox. So we have a couple things that we need to take care of first. I want to put bolts on the side of these trim pieces. Uh, we need some little foot pads down here with some bolts on them. And then I need the, uh, the door. So let's go and take care of all that stuff here. So let's start with the feet. So I'm going to put the feet on the, the bottom of the legs there. And to do that, I'm going to drop down an object merge node and I'm going to get the profile. So I need this profile here. So let's just drag and drop that into the object. And uh, let's set the transform to none. And then let's make a copy of that by using Alt, left click and drag. And uh, let's get this profile. So I want to copy the same profile, but we're going to just treat it a little bit differently. So I'm going to drag and drop that into there. And then we're going to do a copy to points. So I just want to copy it to the endpoints of the profile. So this actually needs to go over here. This is our path and this is our profile. And we're going to copy that. And we just need to copy it to the endpoints of our path up here. So let's go and get the group by range node. And let's set the group type to points. We'll call this ends for the group name. And we'll set the start and end of one and one. And then invert that range. And that'll get us just the endpoints for the path. And then on the copy to points node, we can set the target to just the ends. Sweet. So let's go and template this geometry just for reference. And I'm going to drop down a transform node. And we're going to rotate this in X by 90. And I'm also going to scale it down. And then I also need to rotate it. Uh, let's do 90 and Y. And uh, let's just keep going with that. There we go. We need to do 180. There we go. Cool. So that fits this one guy right over here. Uh, we'll take care of this one pointing in the wrong direction here in just a second. Then let's go and poly expand 2D the profile. Let's get something a little bit fatter than our original curve or our trim curve over there. That's looking pretty good. And then I want to go now and uh, carve, or actually not carve, let's do a poly bubble and let's poly bevel the points on these uh, feet pieces here. So we're going to go up here, go to points, and we're just going to poly bevel that. And let's make them round. So I'm going to add two, actually three divisions there. That looks good. All right, sweet. So now we've got that guy. Uh, to take care of this particular piece pointing in the wrong direction, let's just drop down a clip node now. And we will clip in the Z direction, like so. And then we'll just mirror. Uh, whatever we finish for our feet pieces. So we'll mirror it on the z-axis and that will take care of that problem for us perfectly. So we can merge it with the actual uh, trim and legs and stuff like that. All right, cool. So before we do that, uh, let's go now and create a little bit of depth to this. So I'm going to do a poly extrude and we are going to extrude this guy down. So I'm going to do it downwards this time. It doesn't need to go much. Then let's go and expose the output back and we don't need the front in this case. And then let's reverse that geometry just so we have the faces pointing in the correct direction. Awesome. So now we got our, you know, at least the little footbed there. Uh, we're going to have to add some points. Let's first drop down a poly bevel here and we are going to bevel our edges. Just want to give it a little bit of something. Then let's set the exclusions to, well, let's do 45 then. There we go. That'll work out nicely. It'll just catch some light so it doesn't look super harsh. All right, now I want to take care of the bolts. And so for that, we can take the original poly expand geometry here and drop down a poly extrude node. And what I'm going to do is just inset this to get to where our points should be or where our bolts should be. And I actually want to do... So let's do it this way. Let's uh, poly bevel after we uh, clip. Yeah, we'll do this. We'll do that over there. 
because I really just want uh, the bolt, uh, a bolt at all the corners here. And that looks like it's going to be perfect. All right, so then we're not going to output the side. And I'm going to create a sphere. And this is going to represent our bolt. And I'm just going to clip it so far to look at the geometry for this. I'm going to set it to polygon. And we're going to clip it in the Z direction. So I'm just going to set that to the Z direction. Perfect. Now that we've got that all set up, we can copy it to the points now of the inset geometry up here. And then we just need to scale it way down. So let's draw in a transform node and we'll just scale way down until we get an appropriate size here. Yeah, something like that looks good to me. And I'm going to reduce the radius on the sphere just so it's a little bit flatter on the Z direction here. Awesome. All right, so now we can mirror all that stuff together. So we have our geometry for the feet, and then we have our bolts for the feet. So we can just merge all that together now and mirror it over. So now we have both the, the feet pieces. So the last thing we really need to do is create the UVs for all this stuff. So for uh, the the footbed here. I'm going to drop down a group node and try to select some edges that we can use um, as seams. And so I'm going to call this seam. I'm going to set the group type to edges, turn off the base group, and we're going to go to the include by edges. And I'm going to turn on the min and max um, edge angle and then just reduce the min edge angle. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to use those guys as the seams. So then I'm going to drop down a UV flatten node. And uh, it's a really good node to produce UVs really quickly. So you can see it's already generating pretty awesome UVs for me. In this case, I'd, I do want to cut it just to reduce any sort of um, stretching. You get a little overlap here. You know, this is so small, you're not going to even notice it. So you can do, you know, whatever you want. I'm going to go with that for now. And then for the uh, bolts over here, um, I'm just going to do a UV project. You could use a UV texture, actually. Let's do that to show you guys. Let's do a UV texture and we'll go to, and it's already set up because they're pointing in the Y axis. So it's orthographic and uh, y, y axis. Sweet. So then we just uh, mirror that and then we need to mirror it um, one more time, but actually we'll just leave it like that for now. So let's do a, um, well, let's, let's merge it in with the legs first. So we have this guy up here. Yep. So I'm going to merge it in with the legs. This is where we're moving it over. Yep, so this is our width control. So let's uh, merge all this together with our legs. So I'm just going to merge these guys together. And then we will just move it out and then mirror it. And then we do a UV layout. So all those pieces basically will go together. So let's take a look at our our handiwork here. It's looking pretty good. They feel a little fat. And uh, yeah, they all got organized up here, which actually works out pretty well. I'll adjust it here before we finish it up. So let's go back to the um, scene view and I'm going to actually adjust the size of this a little bit more. So I'm going to show you guys really quickly how I do that. So I'm going to go over to the um, profile over here right before we put it into that poly expand. Uh, let's take a look at our point numbers and our primitives. Yeah, let's do a carved node. And I'm just going to do an equal offset from the ends. And to do that, uh, if you don't have a preset already set up, but to do that, you just copy or just highlight the first U, right click and drag it down to the second U and say a relative channel, and then just do one minus. And now you have an equal offset. So I really just want to control the uh, size of that. So I'm going to come back down to the bottom of the graph here and uh, turn off all my component displays and just start to take a look at this, the size and relationship of that. That yeah, looks pretty good. All right, I might scale it down a little bit too. So let's go back to our transform and this guy right here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now. Maybe on the poly expand, we just bring it in just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Maybe we uh, 
reduce that poly bevel a little bit more. There we go. And then uh, make the bolts a little bit smaller. Very nice. And all of our UVs are still laid out for us. Pretty cool. We've got a bunch of bolts down here too. Those guys are so small, it doesn't really matter. They really just need the color, maybe just a little bit of detail. Cool, so now we need to take care of the door. And for that, I'm gonna go, let's go up to where we're booling the um, geometry up here. Um, because what we can do is we can export out some groups here, and that specific group is the AB seams. So if I take a look at the, let's drop down a null node up here and just kind of break off the geometry and do a, a new stream here. And if I take a look at the um, attributes and groups and go to edges, you can see I'm getting just these two edges, which is awesome because now I can put put like a, either a little door or hatch right here or a little door or hatch right here, right? So whoever uses this particular tool uh, for this prop can change, you know, which face the, uh, the door is on. Uh, so that is awesome. Uh, one thing we need to do is we need to take that group and promote it to points. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to say from edges to points, we're going to convert the AB seams to another points. And the reason is because I'm going to convert this to line. I really w just want to grab just the edges here, just these curves. So I'm going to use a convert line and I'm going to turn off my compute rest length here. And we're going to blast away anything that's not an AB seam point. So let's blast that away. Delete non-selected. And that leaves me with just these, just this curve right here. Right? And so we have uh, zero and one, which is awesome. Because now what I can do is I can um, connect this. So we can say, uh, we're going to do a poly path here. We'll connect this into one path here. I'm going to connect the ends. All right, so now I have a piece of geometry. Uh, we can go and copy our width. So let's make another reference copy here. And I'm just gonna drag and drop this over here. So there's our width, and then we just mirror it. And then skin it. And that leaves us with geometry that we can use. And we need to go back to our mirror node and turn off the reverse normals, and then reverse the curves themselves. So we'll do a reverse, there we go. All right, so now we have um, some options here. We can put a door here, or we can put a door here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split on primitive uh, one. That leaves me with this one. So by default, this is gonna be the, the polygon that has a door on it. But I, I want the user to be able to decide. So I'm gonna set up a switch node here. And now we can switch between where the door is located on the mailbox. Always good um, to find opportunities like that for your procedural tools. All right, so now we need to put a door on this. So to do that, I'm actually going to convert this polygon into a NURB surface. And the reason for that is I want to be able to carve out an equal um, shape out of this. So I'm going to convert this to a NURBS uh, surface. And we're going to set interpolate through holes. And I'm going to set the U and V order to 2. That just leaves us with, with a single quad, but a NURBS quad. And then I can take a carve node and I can um, do an equal offset for both sides. Right, so I'm going to use my preset for the equal offset. This allows me to clip off just the sides here. And if I were to do the same thing for the uh, first V and second V, so let's just copy this and paste this down here and do a one minus. And I now have the ability to basically shape the door and it will always stick inside the, the width of the mailbox, right? So we're just going to get a percentage of that polygon. That looks good. Awesome. So now we need to convert it back to a polygon uh, because I want to be able to use all the polygon tools. So I just drop down a convert node and say interpolate through holes and everything else is fine. So all the defaults are fine. Sweet. So now I am going to um, do a poly bevel and we are going to bevel our points here. There we go. And I'm going to add three divisions to round it off a little bit so it's not so harsh. There we go, looks good. And then I want to do a poly extrude. Just give it a little bit of thickness here. So just lift, lift it up just a little bit. And then I'm going to export out the ex extrude front group. And we're going to use another poly extrude. And we're going to just inset the top part. 
and then we're going to ex export the extrude front again and do another poly extrude. So you, you end up doing this a lot where you chain together these uh, poly extrude nodes. And I'm going to lift this one up a little bit and inset it as well just to give it kind of like a, a decorative piece. I also need to fuse the points up here. There we go. Yeah, we'll just pull this down a little bit. I just want a little bit of a, a feature there. Usually have something on them like that. Cool. So the last thing we really need for the door is we need to create uh, the handle. All right. And so we can build the handle out of this top polygon, actually. So let's do that. I'm going to export the extrude front and I'm going to blast it away. So let's get a blast node and we will blast that away. And we'll say delete non-selected. So we end up with just a single quad. And then we can use an add node uh, to turn this into a curve. So I'm going to say delete geometry. Uh, go to the polygons tab and say by group and uh, we can go and find the we need the uh, the width lines here and it looks like we should sort this so let's uh, sort this and let's start with the vertex order um, or maybe we do it by Z by X that looks good and then we want to do groups of endpoints and there you go so now we have just those so let's drop down a carve node and I'm going to set it to 0.5 so we get the middle of each one of those segments and we're just going to extract the point. And then we can use another add node and turn that into a curve. So this represents where our handle is going to go. So let's actually template our door so we can see where this is going to go. So I want to add another carve node and do another equal offset for this. So let's do an equal offset and we'll just push it out. I don't want it to be right on the edge. Cool, so now we need to turn it into an actual handle. Um, and so to do that, I need to actually move it up in the direction that this door is slanted in, at this angle here. And uh, we can do that by getting the normal. So we can actually get the normal from this polygon right here, from the primitive. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Let's drop down our wrangle node. And uh, let's feed in this blast five node. So just this polygon into the second input like so. And I'm going to get the normal from that. Um, so I want to use the prim normal function. So we say prim underscore normal. So I want to get it from geometry one or input one there. And I want to get it from the current or from zero primitive number. And we want to say 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 to, to sample the primitive in the center of the polygon. And what we're doing is we're actually grabbing this normal, this direction normal, right here. All right, and we're gonna then pass it off to the point. So I'm gonna say at n is equal to norm. So now if I were to turn on my point normals, you can see we have the normals pointing in the right direction, which means now we can go and peak this. Let's do a peak node. All right, so I'm just gonna peak this guy. We're gonna just lift it up like so. I don't wanna recompute the normals either. So I'm just gonna pull this down. And then let's merge the original one with the peaked one. There we go. And then I want to turn this into a polygon. So let's drop down a join node. And I'm going to say wrap last to first and then turn off my blend. And that leaves me with just a single uh, polygon right there that I can use. Cool. So let's then go now and uh, do a convert line. Because I, again, I need to turn this into a curve that's shaped like a handle. So now I need all the outer uh, segments here and not this uh, bottom one. All right, so how do we do that? Well, I'm gonna do a sorting trick. So I'm gonna sort along a vector. And the vector that I want to sort along is that normal direction that we applied to these points. All right, and so um, I am going to drop down a sort node. All right, let's turn off our point numbers and uh, just keep our primitive numbers on. So we need this to be zero, so we can always blast it away. And so, um, to do that, in the sort node, I'm going to set the primitive sort to a long vector. And I want to get the normal direction from this node up here. So this, let's name it, call it set normal. So I want to get the normal direction here from point zero. And to do that, we just come over to our sort node and type in point. So we're going to use a point expression. I want to get the information from that set normal node, or that wrangle node where we set the normal. 
uh, I want to get it from point zero, and the attribute that we want is the normal, and we want zero for this first input to get the x component from the vector. And then I'm going to set it for one for the y, and then set it two for the z. So now if we take a look at our sort node, uh, it's sorting it by that direction. So you can see it's it's got that arrow pointing. So now we have zero, one, two, three, which is awesome because now we can drop down a blast node and delete away uh, primitive zero. And that is will constantly be the case because we're aligning it or sorting it by that vector. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to drop down a polypath node. And we'll say connect endpoints. Very nice. And then we're going to do a poly bevel. And I'm going to bevel the points. And there we go. And we're going to add a few more, just to make it nice and round. And now I'm going to do a sweep node. And we're going to sweep with the round tube option. Oh, we also need to produce proper normals. So let's to do that, let's drop down a polyframe node. And for the tangent, we'll just put in N for the normal. And uh, we'll reverse the cross sections in the sweep node here. And then let's just change the radius on the sweep. And look at that. We have a pretty cool little handle. Increase the amount of segments as well. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's uh, produce the UVs as well using the sweep node. I don't want to normalize the components, and I want to turn off my snapping. So that way I get the true width and length in the UV space. All right. And then finally, we can just merge it with the uh, the door over here. So I'm just going to drop down a merge node and merge these guys together. Like so. Very nice. And let's go and test now our switching. So if I switch to the other polygon, yeah, we should get a, a door up there instead. Pretty cool. Uh, the, the other thing we need to do is we need to UV map this guy. So let's take care of that really quick. I'm going to do my um, edge angle trick here. So let's go and drop down a group node. I'm going to set it to edges. We'll call this seam. I'm going to turn off the base group, go to include by edges, turn on my min and max edge angle, and then just uh, move the min down a little bit until I get what I want. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Then let's do a UV flatten. And for the seams, we'll put in the seam group, and then we'll rectify this guy. So we'll just put an asterisk for that. And it didn't want to do an awesome job with that, but that's fine. Yeah, let's turn this off then. There we go. It's actually better without it. All right, so let's feed that in. And there we go. So now we have our door. Let's drop down a UV layout and get this guy laid out with the other guys. So I'm just going to pull this down here. We could start putting all these things in little subnets. This one got quite long, that's for sure. Um, it's fine for now. So let's uh, merge it in. And let's turn on the template with the control key press on the keyboard. And then let's go to our UV view with the UV layout for the door selected. And let's go and find a little spot for this guy. So I'm just going to put him right over around here, I think. We'll just put it up here. I'm going to allow rotations. There we go. Let's just do 90. Yeah. And let's scale to match the actual surface. And it looks like we can get away with quite a bit here. So we can do something like that. Yeah, that's looking great. Might have to adjust a little bit more, but so far, hopefully, you guys can see you know the pattern of just adding more parts and just adjusting your UV layout uh, in here. Uh, it's looking pretty cool. Uh, let's merge in. Why is the door not showing up here? Oh, I need to match size it. So we actually need to take it from here. Let's do the match size. There we go. And we can move this up, and then we can play around with the size of it. So again, we can go and switch this now wherever we want and let's go and change the uh, the size of the door a little bit that yeah, looks pretty cool I think the uh, overall size of the mailbox just needs to be a little taller so if you remember that was from this guy right here so I can just lift this up a little bit more that yeah, looks pretty cool 
All right, let's go down now all the way to the bottom and take a look. Everything is UV'd perfectly and it's coming along. So the last thing we really need to do is put on some bolts for the sides here and then uh, get everything baked out and put into a Quixel mixer. So let's do that now. Let's get the bolts all finished up and that's pretty simple. Um, I'm just going to put some bolts on the sides here for uh, this demonstration at least. And so I'm going to move all these guys over to the side here and I need to go and get the curve before we add the legs on it. So this guy, so we can actually sample it from here. So let's do that. I'm going to actually merge together with um, all these guys so it goes with this UV layout node. All right, let's now um, drop down an object merge node and I'm going to drag and drop this over here and we're going to just say none for the transform information. So there is my curve and what I need to do is I need to copy a bunch of um, bolts to the side of this and I also need to make sure that this is sitting right on the edge of this guy and it already is actually so that's nice. So we don't have to do any sort of ray casting. I do need to move it inwards a little bit though and so let's take care of that now. Um, to do that I'm going to drop down a point node, a point expression node. And in here, I'm going to set an explicit normal. So I'm just going to set it in the X direction. So 100. Zero, zero. Let's turn on our point, no, point normals here. And actually, I want it pointing the other way. Well, that should be fine, actually. So, And then um, I'm going to drop down a polyframe node. And we're going to create our flow normal. And I'm going to actually call it forward. So let's just do forward. So FWD. There we go. And then in a wrangle node, let's just take the cross product of those two. You could do it with a point bob node as well. So I'm going to say um, at n is equal to the cross product of at n, the current at, at n, and our uh, v at forward. So that forward vector that we created. And that gets us this normal that's pointing outwards, which is fine. You can always negate it. So we can go into the peak node. Let's not recompute. Actually, yeah, we'll recompute. And um, now we can just peak this inwards. Cool, so now we can put our bolts there. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to resample this, and we're going to resample by polygon edge so I get a nice even distribution. That looks good. And then I want to group every other point just so I don't have too many. So let's do a uh, group by range. So I don't have too many bolts on this thing. So I'm going to set the group type to points, and we'll call this bolt. And I'm going to. Make sure that we don't ever have, well, we could always have a bolt down there. I think that's fine. Well, I don't know. I'm going to just remove the start and end just so we start from there. And we'll say every other point, so one of two. Cool. So then, now we can take our bolt that we created previously, so this geometry right here. So let's just copy this. And I'm just going to do an alt, uh, left click and drag. There we go. And then we can just copy these guys to our points. Just because it's already made, there's no reason to make it again. So now we've got bolts. So we could make this a little bit more interesting. Let's actually scale it up a little bit more. This guy's make it a little bit fatter. And then it might be nice to kind of stagger them a little bit. Uh, we also need to go to the copy to points node and set this to bolt so we get the every other pattern. And then let's stagger it a little bit. So I'm going to put down a point jitter node for the main path that we're copying to. And uh, I don't want to update the normals either. And we don't want to do this on the X direction. So we don't, let's put a zero for that. And then let's make the scale just really tiny. I just want a little bit of offset between those bolts. Yeah, this gives it more interest really. Cool, and then we also need to make sure we got uh, some UVs. So. We can um, drop down a UV texture node. And we're going to set this to the Z axis. There we go. And then if we merge it together in this stream right here, we should get it automatically laid out for us. Yeah, so all the bolts are going down there. Very cool. We could always do it a little bit differently. So let's do this here. This is the that strip. So let's keep those guys here. I'm going to... Actually, let's do this. Let's group this. So this is going to be our trim. 
and then we'll group we'll get rid of that and then we'll drop down our merge node here and we'll merge in our trim and our bolts and then what we'll do is we'll move those guys and mirror together but then we'll split down here and treat the UV layout differently so this guy is going to be our trim so I want that layout for our trim pieces and then I want to do a different layout for our bolts and our feet pieces so then we can merge those guys back together so hopefully that made sense I'm just trying to organize it a little bit better all right and let's take a look yeah so now we, we can kind of move these guys around and give it a little bit more space so let's do that now I'm going to basically template this guy by holding down control and hitting the template flag then I'm going to select this guy and we're going to adjust the position for this one to something like over here yeah yeah I like that I'm still I still don't like this over here we've got tons of this space so I think what I'm going to do is kind of free up some space here I'm going to go to this guy and we're just going to move this down like so and I think I'm going to move these guys down a little bit too so I'm going to hit escape in there and then go and select uh, this one come back to the UV view and hit enter again and um, I'm just going to move the gizmo until it fits perfectly like so and then what I can do is I can fit all the bolts up there maybe make some sp yeah I think that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna hit save and then um, let's activate not that one let's do this one so this one's gonna go up here so I'm just gonna move this over here move that up like so that looks pretty good and then I think for this guy, I'm just going to move this down like so. Maybe move it like that. And then we'll do the door. I'll just put it out this way. Or maybe we can fit it down here somewhere. Yeah, so let's turn this guy on. And uh, we'll do something like that. That looks pretty good. Yeah, we still have a big old space over here, which is fine, you know, for the most part. I don't really plan on adding any more parts or anything, so I think I'm just going to have the two trim pieces just take up the rest of that, that area there. So I'm just going to move these guys over here. Give it a little bit of a buffer. Anyways, that's how you go. I do a ton of that stuff. I just go and start to reorganize things and uh, until I get a really nice fit. This looks pretty good. Probably not the, the most perfect, but it's going to work for our purposes right now. And there we go. We have our mailbox. Um, a couple of last things I want to do. Right now I do have harsh edges for this geometry for the, uh, the main box. So I just want to go and take care of that really quick. So I'm going to do that before I create my seams here. This is for the main box here. So I'm going to go and select this. Let's untemplate it. I'm going to do a poly bevel. And we're just going to bevel it just a little bit. Just want to give it a little bit of thickness for that. So that way we get a little bit of light interaction, some specular highlights happening on the edges. Same with this guy. And actually, let's do it right after we blast the bottom. So we're not having to bevel unnecessary things. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, let's hit save and then just check all of our UVs. Everything should be fine. Right, let's go to the UV view. And that definitely changed it quite considerably. So it looks like this piece down here got a little hosed. So I'm going to go and check that out really quick. Oh, let's put it before the sort. There we go. That's why. Right, let's check that out again. Nope, I still didn't grab it. 
Well, let's try putting it after we find that bottom scene seam. Yeah, that looks all right. So let's do that. Take a look. Yeah, there we go. So now we're back to normal. All right. So with that all done, the uh, last thing I want to do is set up some uh, colors. So I'm going to actually move this guy up here in the list just to organize this a little bit. So I want to create a color ID map here. And so I'm just going to give all these guys some colors, so some random colors. Give that a red and then we'll give one of these guys over here. So these two guys can actually go, right? I'll separate it all out. So let's give this like a green. And then we'll give this one a blue. And then we want to do all these other pieces here. So just do some random pieces. So that's the trim. These are the bolts. And these are the feet. All right, let's take a look at that. Beautiful. All right, so that'll be perfect for a Quixel Mixer or Substance Painter. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to add in some ambient occlusion. So I'm going to drop down a divide node here. And I'm going to divide this by the breaker polygons. And I'm just going to do uh, 0.01 and 0.01 and 0 0.01. Like so, just give it a really dense mesh. Like so. And then I'm going to drop down the occlusion node, so the mask by occlusion. And this will put the occlusion mask onto this mask attribute. And so to visualize it, I'm going to drop down a wrangle node. And I'm just going to say that um, at CD is equal to F at mask. And that will show me my uh, occlusion. Yeah. Not too shabby. One thing we should do is also uh, provide some normals here. And I'm going to do something like 45. Nope, let's do, yeah, 65 was good. That looked good. All right, now that we can see our occlusion. Let's go and uh, adjust it a little bit. So I'm going to increase the blurring a little bit and uh, increase the bias over here, get a little bit darker. Let's increase the samples. I'm going to set the ray distance to 3, that will just extend it out a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's uh, good enough. So one thing that we need to do when um, trying to bake this out with the Labs uh, Baker node is we need to make sure that we set this to a new value. So I'm going to set this to V at OCC is equal to F at mask. And we need to make sure that it's set to a vector, that way it gets written out as a grayscale image instead of just an RGB image. All right, uh, with that done, we now have everything that we need to uh, bake with. So I can go and set up the baker. Let's do a bake node. So I'm gonna get the labs maps baker. And we want our, so this is our low res mesh right here. We need to pass that into our divide node as well. Then I'm gonna set this for the low res and I'm gonna set the sky for the high res. So we have our color and our occlusion on there. And I don't want my uh, colors to be overwritten. OK, cool. Yeah, we're all good. And then finally, I'm going to set this to a value of uh, 2K for the texture size. And I'm going to send this to a bake folder. So rather than render, I'm going to set this to bake. And I'm call this mailbox. And I want to leave the channel on there, so I'm just going to call this uh, mailbox. Oh, that looks good. And I want I don't want to do AO. I, I do want to transfer the color, which is fine. And then for the custom attributes, I'm going to get that OCC value that we set up in the, uh, the wrangle node over here. And so that will get our occlusion for us. And with that, we're pretty much good to go. I'm just going to hit render and let this guy roll. Hey, and that looks pretty good. So we got this result. I did notice, though, if I were to make this a little bigger for you guys. I'm getting a little bleeding of the color, and that is because, let me move this off to size, 
of this max trace distance. So let's visualize this, <laughs> and that's the reason why. So let's set this to like 0 0.01, and we'll get a better read on that. We can even go lower, like 0 0.05. Yeah, that'll be much better. All right, let's do that one more time. You hit render. Yeah, and that's much better. So we're getting a much better color ID mask and an occlusion mask too. That looks pretty good. All right, so with that, now I'm gonna go over and uh, just work through the texturing side of things. So for the texturing, I really just wanted to walk through the layers that I did because at the end of the day, I really just uh, you know overlaid a bunch of different types of materials. So I started out with the solid material, um, set it to blue, and just set a really basic roughness and uh, metallicness over here. I added the parkerized, I think that's how you say that, steel, which um, just kind of modified the um, roughness in here and the metalness. And then I added the rusty green metal and I turned off the albedo. So that way it doesn't sit on top, but it gave it this really nice, just kind of bumpy paint look. Just helps break up the surface even more. And then I added a scratched metal and that really was for the uh, curvature. And then I added a rusted metal sheet. This is all for the bottom pieces down here. So this is for all the rust down there. And then I did another one just for all the rust up here. Just to make it look kind of cool. A little bit aged and stuff. So that was really, that's all the metal stuff. And then I just um, put the uh, AO map over the top of this that we baked out of Houdini. And then I just put a logo on it just to make it look official. And there we go. So that's how I did the textures. Alright, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much.